All right, here we go, continuing on. From where we left off, struggling with the Kotlin pair, conversion from the Kotlin side through Objective-C to the Swift side by Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. So we're having a lot of trouble with this. Parameterized type, even though we get instantiated as a class, Swift doesn't like it. Now, in all fairness, I have not upgraded my Kotlin multi-platform version in a long time. And I don't upgrade often because I don't like to get caught on the treadmill that everyone in the world is on of constant software upgrades. There was a time before the internet when that wasn't even possible and we seemed to get by just fine. But now the assumption is whatever software you're using, operating system, tool, application, app, should constantly be getting updated whenever possible so that it's better than before. Now, if we look back on our experience and think, how often do upgrades make what we need better than it was before? Or is it even necessary? It always introduces a change. A change is always a possibility for something to break. It's always an instability. Um, so I tend to hold back. The music's a little loud, isn't it? Uh, this is Carbon-Based Lifeforms Alto 1. And uh, yeah, I have a different approach in philosophy. Uh, I think the internet's a luxury. It shouldn't be a necessity. That's probably a radical take. And I want my systems to work when I'm connected and I'm not connected. And I want them to remain stable. And the higher up, the lower down, the lower down you're in the stack, of software that everything is stacked on top of each other, the stack of the stack that's stacked on the stack. Closer to the bottom, like the machine, the BIOS, the operating system you load, the layers and layers above it. The closer you are to the bottom, those changes are gonna have to be the most impactful across everything you're using. So I'm more likely to upgrade an end user app that only affects that app than something down in the stack. So when it comes to development tools, programming languages, I like stability. I don't need the latest whiz-bang feature at the risk of things breaking. So, should I upgrade it? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna see if I can fix this problem and then at some point I'll do a major change. Let's see where we're at with uh, status here, get log. Okay, so the app storage stuff I've been adding hasn't been properly fully committed on the Kotlin side yet. I will do that at some point. But uh, it really is just these two delegated platform functions. Load file a string, store file a string. There's not much here. As you can see, there's no substance to this other than it reflects back on the reflects back onto the platform function and actually does the work. So on the Kotlin side, it's pretty thin, which is good. Thin is good, less is, less is better. But uh, we're having a problem returning this pair as it goes through the sausage maker of Objective-C to Swift. It gets to a, to a state that I haven't figured out how to use. Now this could be a shortcoming on my side. Maybe there's some trick to get it to work. But to solve the problem, I'm simply just going to create a dedicated structure instead of this pair. And because a dedicated structure will be a class that's not templated, hopefully I won't get this error, right? Template instantiation be a class. Now I haven't looked at the actual array generic type to understand why it's complaining about this. Uh, if I ask Xcode, it's not going to tell me because for whatever reason, this IDE has zero intelligence, probably because of the way the project's set up. But uh, let's just do a search for it. I'm not even going to use chat gipit. Let's just say uh, Swift Array uh, generic and see what we get. Here we go. 
docswift.org. Let's move to a new location. All right, generics, generics, generics. I guess I am doing it the slow way. Here we go, right. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here. Let's let's do it. Let's do the chat. Gip it. Let's ask it the question. I think we're still here on tuples. Yeah. Uh, what is the actual class of a Swift array? I'm going to say a T generic type. It's a struct not a class. Interesting. Okay. So why does this require that it be a class? Kotlin pair requires that array of string be a class type. All right, I spent way too much time on this. Let's just do what we need to do. All right, I'm just going to add a type to app storage here. Uh, although it's a type, it should be able to go into pure. Where do I want to put it? Common main pure stuff. It's not app state. It's not just a straight value. Uh, it's a simple type. Let's put it in here for now, and then we'll move it. So we don't have structs and columns. We have data classes. And uh, what is the return here? It is an, oh no, it can't be impure. It's got that mutant in it. So yeah, it makes perfect sense to make, put it here. So app mutant, and it returns a list of strings. String list. <laughs> what else should it be? And it's just the app mutant. Uh, we'll say am. Well, this is, okay, so this is a case, I tend to use these short variable names, single letters, double letters, for temporaries. Uh, an argument name coming into a function is a temporary, right? It's short-lived, it's short-lived within the scope of the function. Now, I know a lot of people are like, you should have long names and all this sort of stuff, but um, I have reasons for this. So just trust me. In this case, we're going to call it admin. admin. And uh, string list, we'll just call strings. And it's a list of strings. I know I could cut and paste, but honestly, sometimes I'm faster at typing than I am at cutting and pasting. And uh, we're going to give this, we can't give it a default. We don't want to do that, but we can make a default empty list on here. Do we want a default? I don't think we want any defaults. So in theory, why is it complaining about all this? Oh, I have to say, uh, I have to say val, val. This is what I like about a data class. I mean, it's as, as close to a structure as you can get in a dynamic, well, dynamic, statically compiled, but at runtime, for the most part, a data class is a, is a dynamic entity. What is it not like here? Oh, we don't need that. Uh, why does it not like that? I'm going to see why the compiler is going to complain about that, but it looks correct. We used to have to do this in C++ because it would confuse the double uh, greater than signs as a stream operator when you were using template types. Maybe something they fixed, I don't know. Uh, and we're going to return an app mutant string list. So, 
Obviously, the signature needs to match. Ah, well, that solves that question. This needs to be in platform functions then, because signature is going to be in here. Yeah, and you can see I've got other data classes in here. So we'll just move this into that. Uh, we'll put this into order. And we'll go ahead and put it on multiple lines, even though it's relatively short. I am curious why the compiler is angry about this. List string. Is it list of? No. It's not going to like that for some reason. Or just the editor is not very smart. I like to call them align things like this. Even though that goes against the grain. Okay. Uh, and then I'm back to app storage. Yeah, app mutant uh, string list. So that's the result of load. App mutant string list. And the default. I would wrap the line because I don't like long lines, but it's kind of nice that it's not broken. Hmm. I mean, the default's not really an important implementation. I suppose I could do that. Man. Um, app mutant string list. We provide the app mutant and we provide an empty list and we should be good. Let's build and see what happens. So the compiler's gonna complain. Oh, Android emulator closed unexpectedly. Nah, you don't need a report from me. Yeah, there it is. Expecting a comma. Oh, my brain is fogged out. We don't need that. Now it's complaining about this. Redeclaration, yeah, I already declared it here. Fine. Whoops. Yeah, good. All right, this will probably solve the problem that we're having. Yeah. We're just doing the same thing. It's uh, that's done by the default implementation. All right, good, compiles, yay. So where are we? Expected a type. We're not gonna see this error again when we recompile. We'll see something else. Now we're on the Xcode side, the uh, iOS side, the Swift side, the Apple side, the Apple garden. And we're gonna see what happens. Why do I have a to-do in here? I guess I could watch the video that I was at. Oh, fixing this. <laughs> I'm staring at it. Uh, you guys, anybody watching this probably thinks I'm pretty dense. I'm okay with that. Right, so now we have this Kotlin type in which the name should get mapped, string list. So we don't have this generic signature anymore. And we've got to do the same thing down here. Cut and paste, cut and paste. Now this is doing the actual work, is it? No, this is just the facade. Yeah, it's calling the Kotlin side. So in getting the result, Result first. Now this was when it was a pair. It's no longer result first. So at mutant is uh, at mutant. This is an if let because oh this we might not have to do the if let anymore because this uh, 
This should be non-null now that it's in a structure. I think when I was doing the the pair thing, the Kotlin pair was actually inserting a nullable qualifier on the first and second members of the pair, but I'm not doing that. So I should be able to simply do a straight return of replace global app mutant. I'm confused here. So we get the result. We load files as strings. We're using the global app mutant. And we're done replacing the app mutant. Oh, this is an example of a, uh, yeah, this is the thing I need to figure out how to do tacitly without the intermediate result. Probably some type of combinator, such as those used in uh, functional languages and array languages. Now, Connor Hoekstra has a library for C++ in which he provides some of the combinators for C++. And maybe there's some equivalent to that for Swift, where I could get that, that effect would be kind of nice. Because I like tacit programming. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to comment this out. See if I can just straight up. Uh, so it's interesting as this result comes back. I don't need an inter Why do I need an intermediate variable? I don't. Replace global app mutant. I should be able to call directly. I mean, I can get rid of the intermediate variables. This isn't using a combinator, but I can get rid of the intermediate variables by just uh, nesting the evocation, the function application of one inside the other. And I believe replace global app mutant does return itself. I should probably be able to do that. Oh no, I gotta return this string list. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I can't do it like this. This is the whole problem. Not thinking. The result is this is this compound structure. It's both. But I need the at mutant part of it. Um, but I don't need the if let. So I should be able to do this with result dot at mutant. And I'd really like to condense this down to a single call, like I have here, call with global app mutant, where I provide a function or a lambda that uh, takes an app mutant and returns an app mutant. So I don't do the call to global app mutant myself in the replace. This is this is the handshake effectively. Let's, uh, let's nest this down so we can see that. <clears throat> so this is the handshake. Get the global app mutant, pass it to this function, with another argument, take the result, and it's a resulting app mutant, replace the app mutant. So some kind of combinator would be really nice here. And then I wouldn't need an intermediate variable. Let's see if I can compile it. Okay, uh, this is this code somewhere else that, yeah, I gotta replace this type. App mutant. Uh, string list. And again, we're not returning that. We're returning that mutant. We're just trying to get through the compile phase now. We're not going to implement it yet. And KMM will create a, a constructor with should be the same names. App mutant AM. And in the case of the, of the uh, strings, I'm going to do an empty array as that and see if KMM will convert that to, the, to a compatible list instance of nothing, an empty list. See if it can dig that. Let's solve our problem. It's compiling way. So an hour or so wasted chasing down the whole difference between a generic structure and a class and not being able to marshal that across the KMM boundary. But the good news is we got this problem somewhat resolved. Um, so now we're just going to implement this. Let's implement it and see what we get.
but let's save what we did. Always save, always save. I think we got a bunch of whips in here anyway. Yep. Uh, get out of it. And this is where we just fixed what we were struggling with. All right. So we do 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 do. Whip eight. Uh, app storage. Load files. Uh, fix return type. Yeah, push go on. And let's save the work we're doing over here. Do we have a whip here? Yeah, we do. I think we can use the same, literally the same. Yeah, app storage, load files, fix return type. Let's just use the same thing. I use whip numbers to kind of know where I am. Sometimes I try to make the numbers match, like kind of show that the, the work's syncing up. So I'll go ahead and do that. Whip eight. Yeah, oh. <laughs> whip eight's already in there. Whip eight, whip eight, whip it. Whip it good. These don't matter because these commits will get replaced. Mm. 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 Righty, righty, righty. Okay, so implement me now. Let's do something. So the read operation for just getting the files back. So if we look at these store files, store, store string as file, we're calling our own file service save data. This is a class from the legacy code in Swift. In fact, this is the one time that I bet if I say jump to definition, I'll actually go there. Yes, it can seem to find its own Swift files. Save data is going through all this stuff with temporary directories and all that good stuff. Um, so do we have an equivalent load? There's a copy item, remove item, content string, no. No, 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 no. We might have to do this ourselves. There's a bunch of tries, creating directories, and all that stuff. I don't really want to rewrite all this right now. This is all going to be re recoded on the Kotlin side anyway. I mean, ultimately, it'll call out to a platform function for, for actual I.O. But this is an example of there's a difference between, how do we say, mechanical logic and the actual final operating system API calls themselves, right? You can delegate, you can say like, here's a mechanical logic of, I gotta see if there's a directory already exists. If it is, I gotta make sure that this thing's correct. Does a file exist, does it not exist? Do I have to re, you know, create, do I have to update? You know, whatever this logic is. You wanna write that once, and then the final, final, final thing gets bound to its platform specific um, API. And I've noticed a lot of people when they're writing multi-platform code, they tend to make the they tend to go to the platform too early, right? Which means they end up rewriting mechanical logic, such as a lot of this twice, once for each platform. So the trick in in in, in really trying to create the bulk of your code in platform independent code is is to delay defer that final call that is truly unique by platform to the last possible moment. And uh, we'll try to do that at some point, but for right now, we're not writing any of this on the Android side, so we're just gonna see what we can salvage. Now, this RS file service is the base class. There's another one, yeah, there it is, is that it? This is Swift. What is this telling me? Swift Foundation. This is how I organized the stuff. I reorganized all these files that were organized differently. Source Legacy Swift Foundation, meaning it depends only on the foundation, you can see there. So it's pretty low level, which is good. Um, RS File Service, but this is used, I thought there's a sub, I think there's a subclass of this. 
file service, RS file service. This is the subclass. So this one is, does a bit more. Why is there, I mean, what's the purpose of having this split into two classes, a base class and a subclass? Well, probably that was the evolution of the code as it was written. I mean, is, this, is it the same author? So same offer. <clears throat> I think RS is his initials, Russlin. A lot of the code, new stuff, he was going through a generation of rewriting a lot of the Objective-C stuff in Swift. I don't know, I haven't talked to any of the prior developers. I'm, I'm just speculating based on what I see here in the code. Uh, but a lot of stuff has this RS prefix. Uh, there we go, like RS alert, RS image, but not all the Swift code. So some of it he said RS. Maybe that's rehearsal? But then why wouldn't he say RS router? I don't know. We're not always consistent in our names, and I'm as guilty of that as anybody. I tend to change my naming strategy midway through projects all the time, and so schizophrenically, one half will have names following one line of thought, and then the other half of the other line of thought with the idea that at some point I'm going to come back and make it all consistent when those miracle days happen. Uh, all right. Like shared facade should be Rusha facade. Back to what we were talking about. Uh, uh, I drifted off already. Found. So we have file service and we have RS file service. RS file service is the super class. And discardable result, discardable result. What does that mean? I don't really need to know right now. Um, but I would say what it looks like the differences are, this looks fairly generic in the sense of it doesn't know anything about domain objects here, not really. You know, we've got, um, we've got some hard-coded constants for directories, but for the most part, this looks like a generically reusable across any type of data. Where as soon as we go to the file service, we can see we're talking about script. Although I don't see a script object in here. I think when it says script, it means script the PDF file. So scripts are made up, scripts are essentially, the actual scripts are essentially PDF files in the app. But there's also a core data script object, which is the domain object surrogate for that script which is its metadata used by the app. So when they're saying make do script here, see, I don't see any reference to the script object. And again, it's only importing foundation. Although I do believe that all Swift code within a project has visibility to any other Swift code of the project without imports. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I could type in actual script here and it would find it and know that it's going to use that. So it's kind of a global namespace. Maybe there's a way to, to Lockdown namespace is not important right now. Um, and yeah, this just, like you say, make new script. It's just taking a URL. What is this doing? Absolute strings. Oh no, there it is. That's a domain object. Okay, so it is tied to the domain objects. We can see right there. Base script. Yeah. Move script is not. This looks like it could be called on any on any file. File name, file name, file extension, unique file name, get file name, unique path, move item. But you're only providing one path. How does it know where to move it? String returns a string. Let's see. Path source, unique path. It's taking the original path with unique file name, get unique file name, base name. I see.
This must be a utility that's being used when something is downloaded or retrieved. And then it just has its, its simple name and then it's putting it into what it's calling unique file name, generating a, a completely unique signature for it for its actual persistent storage. Yeah, okay. Anyway, what's my point? Uh, I'm wanting to load data from a file. I don't really see any code doing that. Move item, content string. Oh yeah, here we go. It's this. Get the contents of a file. But we're going to be using a wildcard file spec. So we're going to be getting a file list and then iterating over it and getting the contents of the file. And that's what we were looking back at here. Yeah, file manager default contents at path. And I think this returns, um, believe that returns a data object or a data, a class literally called data that then has to be converted into a string or interpreted as a string. So the path is the file spec. Let's just see what happens when we do this. I am curious. Uh, probably going to be some kind of if let or some, I, I probably have to wrap this in a try. Let's just see what happens. When in doubt, just run it. And I'm not even doing anything with the return value here. Cells. All right, disable all the breakpoints at this point, at this time point in time. Let's just keep on going. Find sets. Right, here's where we're gonna actually be calling this. Boom. All right. That's our wildcard. It's looking for files like that. And do we get an exception? No, because we don't do anything with the result. <laughs> Let result equal. Let's see what we get when we do that instead. I'm curious what kind of result we get. Yeah, I know it's never used. Does that mean we can't look at it? Disable these breakpoints. All right. Nil. Right. So let's see what file manager will do for us. Oh, this is one of our own classes, is it? No, it is file manager. That's an API class. But there are some extensions under legacy. Interesting. So we can see, let's see what we've got our, as our own extensions. Nothing usable here. Yeah, I don't really see anything usable here. Oh yeah, this is the, ex <laughs> that's funny. I'm like looking at all this other stuff, N64, whatever. It's because all these extensions are thrown in the same file called extensions. Um, add skip backup attribute, remove item unsafely. Yeah, we're not doing any of that right now. <clears throat> okay, so back to uh, jump to definition. Let's look at the uh, actual header. So it's an objective C and there's actually Swift code for it as well, which is interesting. Is this a separate file? It's in the same file. So it has Swift code and subjectified Swift code here. See? Oh, that means class. This means class. Although this is, Swift doesn't have headers, does it? 
No, this is objective C. But the extensions are in the same file. Let's go back. I'm just curious about that. Uh, jump definition, let's see the extensions. Yeah, I get it. All right, doesn't matter. Uh, what we're looking for is contents. Contents of a directory at URL. This method returns nil, and blah, 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 blah. An NS array of URLs identifying the directory entries. It returns nil, and NS array will be turned by reference in the error parameter. So contents of directory at URL, which is probably what we should say. Uh, no, because then we'd be giving a directory spec with just the directory. We want it to do a meta on it. We might have to get the whole directory and do our own regex against it. That would be a bummer. Well, we got a few more matches here. Contents of directory at path. Directory contents at path. Uh -huh. Contents equal at path. Returns in a, of all contents and subpaths recursively from the provided path. This may be very expensive. Good to know. Contents at path. Compatibility means these are old methods. Well, I think that's the one we're using, right? At path. Yeah, this is this funky way it name mangles or name unmangles. So that's the one we're actually using. And we probably want to use something different. For compatibility, corresponding methods which return NS errors should be regarded as the primary method of creating a file, retrieving the contents of file. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's look at the other method. It'd be nice if you told me the actual name of the method. Whoops. I don't know what happened there. Oh, this is, this is the weird navigation through a tab. Yeah, I don't get that. All right, we don't need that. We don't need that. Let's just... Uh, all right, we'll keep some of this other stuff open. Um, back to where we were. <laughs> Let's go back to the definition. See, yeah, see how, I think it inserted a tab, added a tab. We don't need shared facade. Let's get rid of that. Platform blob. Uh, we'll keep these other ones open. Okay. Oh, whoa, I'm doing two fingers on, what? Oh man, this. I've already complained enough about this IDE. I don't need to complain more. I think our music is done. No, no. Is it done? It's just very quiet. Huh. It's very quiet. Is it playing? It's playing. It's the sounds of silence. Next song. Something happened to my audio? My other computer? Huh. Sorry for the delay, folks. Folk, nobody, whoever's out there. Let's try the next album. It's at the end of this album, anyway. Uh, we're moving on from alt, is it alt. Oh, what happens is I have this stupid speaker set that when it goes silent, it goes idle for a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, 23, Interloper. I think these are remixes. World of Sleepers. I have all those. Hydroponic Garden. There's all the originals. Let's go back to the newest. Let's play Seeker. Photosynthesis. Oh, those are videos. Okay. We're going to play Seeker. Keep it not too loud so it's not too obnoxious. 
to the nobody's no no persons that are listening. Uh, so back to searching for contents. Okay, contents equal at path does not take into account data store and resource worker. All right, so that's a Boolean operation. That's not gonna do much for us. Okay, here we go. Nullable NS array of strings. It's good, it's good news. This is just gonna give us a list of uh, file specs. Probably null. So contents of directory at path, path, uh, error. Oh wow, it actually has an out parameter. That's pretty archaic. You give it an out parameter for an error. Yuck. Swift have something newer than this? Let's find out. What is the Swift API for local file IO? That is different from NS File Manager. Mac OS 10, da, 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 da. it's still File Manager, looks, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is not new, it's what I'm looking at. Oh wait, File Manager is a replacement for the older NS File Manager. A more swift friendly API. You know, I don't actually believe you because I'm looking at the exact header that it's showing me when I look up File Manager. So if I go to jump to definition and I say, show me the Swift side of it, which should be this. Well, I don't see an extension. This just looks like the old Objective-C to me. Huh, that's funny. Okay, file exists at pass, file contents at path. Yeah, we did all that. Process the data, yeah, 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 yeah. Data to write, destination path. Contents of directory, yeah. Well, it doesn't look like I can just give it a, a, a mask with wildcards and it will do the work for us. Well, I don't know, contents of direct, well, we'll just try it. Let's try contents of directory and see what happens. And uh, there's a do try in here. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Contents of directory. So I can call it and either pass the error Okay, so this is this. See, contents of directory at URL, including properties for keys. Uh, iOS 4, okay, that's fine. But can I, I'm passing an out parameter or it's turning it into a do where error will get thrown and then caught. Hmm, I don't know. Let's try this, see what happens. We're gonna try the chat gip it way to do it. I obviously don't need that. Oh no, I gotta reformat. I suppose if I was using a copilot y thing, it would do all this for me. And I'd be so many more minutes ahead of my work. Am I being, uh, am I being too sarcastic? Probably. Contents of directory at path file spec. Mm hmm. Try that. Oh, sorry. We're not doing that.
error. That's helpful. I'm guessing the meta character is probably not. It's well, it's not a path, is it? That's just. Oh, that's not a path at all. That's just the that's just the file spec. I need to do what was done on the save data stuff inside RS file service. This is the thing I need to reuse is all of this logic from when it was saved where it builds the path based on uh, these de defined directories and these domain masks and all that great stuff. Yep, yippity, yippity, yep. So, is all this platform specific? So it's just an enum, docs, temp, and bundle. And it gets its path using path two. This is it right here. I should be able to make a call to this and I should be fine, right? Path two, path string. Does this do an append? Yes. String by appending path component. Okay. I can just use it. Yeah. And the default is docs. I'm okay with that. Path two. Wow, must work for me. Let's try that again. RS comment file service. This is a static method. Can I call it directly? Do I have to have a singleton? Uh, looks like I need a singleton. Is there a singleton here? Or do I have to instantiate it in order to call this function? I mean, this is a class that has no members that I can see. It looks to be just a namespace around a bunch of functions. See how this is used elsewhere. Yeah. You've got to instantiate a class of nothing in order to call a function. Yeah. Being OO for the sake of OO. That's what that is. I used to do that a lot. I'm not going to change the code right now. I'm fine with it. Let's try this. You got to unwrap. Because it could give us a null. Why does it make it a nillable? It doesn't look like it's nillable to me. Oh, there's a guard let here. Oh, there's the return nil right there. Why do that? Why not just return empty string? Wow. What's the thought process here? I'm going to let the caller pass me a nil, and if it is a nil, I'm going to return a nil. Why would I let the caller pass me a nil? It must be, an, it must be a convenience for a bunch of calls where the arguments are coming from other variables that are already nillable. Yeah, I'm going to guess what's happening is when he wrote this, 
I'm assuming a he. Um, for example, here, yeah, I mean, because, you know, ns anything is nillable. He doesn't want to have to say if it's not nil, you know, if nil, if not nil. He doesn't want to be forced into having to pass a non nil value. So it's just conveniently building it into the uh, to the method itself. I mean, because it's being called. This is being called from from uh, from Objective C, which we don't have non nillability. Everything's nillable. So it's like, yeah, I can always be getting this nillable thing. And if you gave me a nil, I'm going to give you a nil. So there. <laughs> be nice to have a wrapper that that it takes a non nil that I have to evaluate for nil. But okay, fine. Um, I'll just do my own. Don't care. You get an error this time? Yep. Still getting an error. Same error. What is this? Obviously, I, since I didn't use an intermediate variable, um, I can't see what this is. But I'm going to guess that the uh, it's not really a hmm. Probably going to want to not append it. Actually, I'm going to do two of these just for, for giggles. We're going to say dir spec file spec. The dir spec is going to be just the dir. Remember, if we give it a nil, we come back with a nil. I want the prefixed directories. And I'm going to try this twice and see what happens. Uh, dir contents we're going to say uh, matching contents this is going to use the directory spec which should basically just give us every file in the directory <clears throat> and this in theory um, let's call this full spec. Yeah, because it's a file spec, not a yeah full spec. Actually, let's let's be even better than that. Let's call it yeah full spec dir spec. So give me just the contents of the directory. I'm guessing this this will probably work. Depends on whether it's going to have a trailing. Um, Thing or not, and this is going to be dir spec, and this is going to be full spec. We'll put the uh, put the nullable thing here. Okay. Okay. Break point. Do we get an error? No, we get no error. So our uh, there's our directory spec, and this is why we have to build this path. All right, it's a crazy path for the internal file system available to the app. Never never click on anything, but dir contents uh, 54 values. There we go. There's all the files. So we can see, oh, that's interesting. This, you can see some old files still sitting there. Um, 
before I did a rename on that. There's default database. It's kind of nice. It's got a nice little utility. And this is why I should build into the app itself. Just a nice little uh, observ observability here. Yep. So these files are there. Guts. String guts. <laughs> Funny. So it looks like I'm going to have to regex the file name. Well, the nice thing about it is I get a list of just the file names. And I can regex those against this file spec. I mean, this is a regular expression, right? Um, this says zero or more in regex syntax. So if I use this as a regular expression on this collection, I could pick off the files I want to read. This is still going to generate an error because I'm basically treating this full spec with the name in it as a directory and it's going to say, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, so I know what I need to do. Uh, let's get rid of these breakpoints. All righty, righty. Uh, we're still going to be using these do's and these tries, so let's get rid of all that. Load files as strings, and here's our file spec, which is a wildcard. Uh, so we're still going to do, we're still going to do the directory spec thing, and we know that we're just getting the directory. I don't need this intermediate variable. Let's basically say, give me this path. I mean, obviously, I should get an error if I can't generate a path, but this is not an I.O. thing. This is not, yeah, this is not going to be a problem. I'm not going to worry about that. All right, don't need that. We don't need this full spec thing either. Gone. What we do need is we do need to take File spec is a reg, so we're basically going to do a four. Uh, and God, I don't remember the syntax for four as much. I'd really like to do this functionally, so I'd like to map um, Can I do a map? Hmm. That would be interesting. Dirt contents, map. And the function I'm going to map over, well, wait a minute. I want to filter. I want to filter names and then map them. So really what I want is a filter. Yeah, filter. And the filter is going to be a lambda. And the argument should be um, each item in the collection will be the argument coming into this lambda. So we'll call it item in. And then what we want to do is we want to kind of regex against file spec. I bet there's an extension on string that says something like matches item, or it's going to be item matches string. I wonder if that even exists. That would be funny. But I'm just going to just goof around and see if that happens. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> um, yeah, we're com going to comment this out for now. Because the following thing we're going to do, so we're going to do a filter and then we're going to do a map. So filter map. So a nice way to do this would be like this. Dirt contents. Filter map. And the map is in a, going to be an effectful function. And does that really matter? We're in an effectful procedure. But 
Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, so our item, of course, is we'll call it file path. Well, it is a file but file path, and actually just call it path because that's what it's expecting. Path in, and this is where we're going to say give me the contents of directory. So this map should produce a collection of strings, and that's our result. That's literally what we want. File manager contents of directory add path path. That path path and this is the functional way man we're starting from a collection we're filtering it based on a reg, reg expression I'm not sure whether the expression is the matcher or the matcher is the expression either way we'll flip it around if it doesn't seem to work so file spec comes in matches this item let's just Let's say file name, because that's really what it is, right? Uh, we're going to call it file path. Um, we don't want contents of directory. I think we have to build, we have to rebuild the full path before we read it, don't we? Yeah, we do have to do that. Um, filter file name, again, file name. So it's kind of the same. Yeah. But it's gonna be a little more complex. Well, not really. Not really that much more complicated. Uh, we don't have path as an argument. We have and we want contents at path, I think. Right? Path to uh, file name. We're appending it. And uh, of course, we've got to do that for that nullability thing. Now, at any point in which an exception is thrown in here, it's going to catch this in an error. So maybe there should be a do, there should be a try in here. And if it fails to read a file for whatever reason, the string can can reflect that. I don't know that I want to interrupt the reading of the entire list. You know, just abort the whole thing if any of it fails. Um, but let's just see if this works first. Uh, catch exception within well, let's just see what we get here so we should end up with dirt contents try see this this seems really unnecessary to me this double thing here but I have to have a try don't I Well, actually, the try, this should chain up. So actually, instead of saying try, remember, this is, I can catch the exception within. I'm going to figure that out, but yeah. Strings, really what I want to say is this. This is, this is how terse I want this to be. Well. I'm going to do this for now, and then I'll collapse it when it's working. But uh, really what I'm saying is let strings equal dir contents filter map. And uh, when this works, I'm going to have this return inside here. And this return is inside the error.
Oops. Yeah, I just want this. Generally don't care for multiple returns, but... And uh, this is not, shouldn't be a print, really should just end up being a log. We got logging in here somewhere, I think. Somewhere around here, there's a bunch of logging. I'll just leave that there for now. Strings in this case is strings. Well, I'll see what happens. Let me rename that to file name. File spec matches file name, or file name matches file spec, not sure which. Cannot convert value of regex output match. Matches. Isn't that just going to return a Boolean? Oh, I see. Matches of. Of. String conform to regex component. So which one is the regex? Regex component. to see how we how we deal with this. Oh come on. Come on. Show me what regex component looks like. You almost can't use Xcode without chat gip it or a web search. Um All right, fine. How do I match a Swift string to a another Swift string that contains a regular expression? NS regular expression. That's hilarious. Uh, this is this is the state of the art in Swift. We're still stuck on next step, twenty year old code. I get the feeling that on the development side of the world, Apple just they just do the minimal. They're not really about pushing forward the the edge of of development advancement. They just want to sell their products. They're not really a development-oriented organization. So they just kind of do the minimal. But isn't there stuff that their people want to use dog food with that would be amazing? Are they all using JetBrains themselves and they just don't even bother with Apple's tools? It just, it, it's amazing to me. I mean, Swift has been around for how long? It's still just bolted on top of old Objective-C next step code that's been around for generations. It's kind of crazy. I mean, Google, for all its insanity, at least, you know, ventures out in new directions. They throw their money around and have people try things. As much as I don't care for Flutter and Dart, I mean, it's at least an effort to, to take a new approach. But Apple really moves at a snail's pace when it comes to trying to advance the leading edge of their the development to support their technologies. They really move slow. And Swift is is not any kind of groundbreaking language. I mean, Kotlin really isn't for that matter either. 
can you really make groundbreaking languages? I mean, all, all great ideas have been captured somewhere, but, but uh, it, it is just a nicer improvement on Objective-C. Kotlin is really just a nicer improvement on Java. It's not a bold move in a new direction. Nobody's really making bold moves, not in the mainstream anyway. It's all at the periphery, it's all at the edges. It's where the interesting stuff, stuff is happening. Um, yeah, anyway, complaining. There's gotta be a more straightforward, I mean, to have to, to, have to declare this, it's gotta, there's gotta be a more condensed way of doing this. In fact, I've probably already done it somewhere in the code base. Sometimes the best search to do is to search your own code. You think of something once, just go back and look at what you've done before. Um, I'm just doing a fine grep on EdgeX. Yeah. Do it on star, every file. Ugh. EdgeX. <laughs> can I talk and code at the same time? I don't know if I can do either. So, well, this is some legacy code. Just a string. There's no regex anywhere else in here. Wow, amazing. I would think there's an extension on string. Let's see. Is there an extension on string that takes a regex for matching? Come on, there's got to be an extension on string. I mean, given an object-oriented mindset, it's like monkey patch everything to death, right? Just just add all this value-added stuff through the, that's the whole point of the extension syntax. So take an existing class and bolt all kinds of new features on top of it without breaking the base class. This just seems to me like an example where somebody would have done that, probably in a library somewhere. Yeah, exactly like this. Below is an example, but who hasn't done that? As of my last knowledge, Swift standard library itself does not provide for a direct extension on the string type. I mean, Python, ex regular expressions are built in at an almost fundamental level of the language. You can regular expression everything. There's just, just minimal effort here. Should I, just, should I just cut and paste this? No. Why do I have to, why do I have to do a try? Oh my God, this is pure. This should have no side effects. And yet we've got to catch an exception being thrown if we build this incorrectly. Wow. That, that exception mindset is, is really deeply embedded. I was a big, I was a big fan of it when it first appeared. Actually, it appeared all the way back in Ada, I think I can remember, um, prior, to, prior to C++. Before I got into C++, I had some experience with Smalltalk, and I was coming from the Modula 2 Pascal world, Turbo Pascal, Modula 2 Pascal, and Ada was going to be the next great language that had a level of robustness and you know, type safety and all of that. And I think expressions, exceptions were first showed up there and then they showed up in C++ and was like, yeah, this is a great idea. You know, we won't just have things crash, but a, but a, a method or a procedure can say, I can't process this information, let the caller deal with it. And over the decades, it's just turned out to just be a nightmare. It just completely destroys uh, your ability to reason about the execution paths in your program because it's a ripcord, you know, at any point, somebody can just pull the rip, jump out of the airplane and pull the ripcord. It was a nightmare in Java. And yet we subscribe to the idea that it somehow provides a kind of sanity checking that wouldn't otherwise be there in the code. Because I mean, what's the, what's the alternative? Programs at ab end, right? Blue screen of death, BSOD, and not knowing why, right? Uh, heap dumps. 
segfault. Express, ex exceptions are better than segfaults. Now you know what's better than ex ex exceptions? Forcing a error return and forcing the caller to deal with the error in a sane and rational way and not letting them have a way out. Let it, let, I'm letting them silently just ignore failure and have to deal with failure. Although Erlang has it right. Go ahead and let it crash, let it segfault, but it doesn't segfault the whole system. It just segfaults a portion of the system which is actually restartable and recoverable. You know, of course, assuming you, you, build your, you build your system intelligently in, in terms of the sorts of components that can be restarted. And, but that's the whole mindset. It's like stuff's gonna crash, but let's not kill the world when we do that. Exceptions are kill the world. Kill the world because I guarantee you there's no way that every line of code in an app has all the catches for all the exceptions that can possibly occur, like out of memory, what are you gonna do? Segfault, goodbye. Um, okay, NS regular expression. So this is the code I want. But it's weird that I didn't get, I, why did I not get an, oh, there is a matches. Yeah, see, look at that. Where is this defined? I'm sitting here ranting the whole time when I could have just done a search. Where is matches? Is that an extension that is in here somewhere? No, but it's not acting as if, as if this is not found. Matches of that string conformed the string conformed to regex component. So which one, which one is the regex? It's regex, maybe, hmm, I don't know. All right. Say pattern. Oh, back. Do I do regex? Let's try that. expression, pattern is a string, got that. I like how regex is a string and regex is also the expression. That's confusing, perfect example. Same name used twice. And in fact, this is, this is a rebinding of the name, right? This now blocks us from seeing the original string. This is, this is not good, a good programming practice. If you're gonna use intermediate variables, at least make them unique. Don't reuse them. And they mean entirely different things. This is the incoming argument in the form of a string. This is an, a local object of a regular expression. These are not the same things and yet they have the same name. It's, just, it's terrible. Range, why do I need a range? Wow, I got to do all this. But there's a but there's a matches. It's like where is this function? Where is this method? See, look at all these extensions. There's a bunch of extensions in here, extensions there. Okay, so 
I mean, the string class has been monkey patched all over the place in this app. We can see all those. Where's the actual string class itself? Is it in a string? I bet it is. Like, where's the string class? Hmm. I think this might be a case in which using chat gip it slowed me down. This is exactly this is probably what chat gip it sucked up. Yeah, well, I got to do what it says. String matches pattern. String version three solution. String range of regex options. Regular expression range. Nil, 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 nil. Wow. See, someone else did a matches. Yeah, look at that. Look at this. There is some regex logic built into the string class. This guy made a nice wrapper for it. Yeah. This is better than chat gipit. Look at what chat gipit gipit wanted us to do. It wanted us to go through all the the old mungy stuff here because it just it sucked down old stuff that it found. But this is this is a lot simpler. Now I don't I'm not going to make an extension. I don't like that. What I will instead do because I don't like monkey batching. I'm not a fan. But I will say string matches. And we'll take we'll take an in, input string. that. We don't monkey patch. So now we can say string matches. File name string matches. File name file spec. We got some utility stuff here. I'm going to just put it in functional for now. This is pure. I don't know how pure this thing is. I mean, it's throwing exceptions potentially makes it pretty unpure. I need a place for it. Let's put it in concurrency for now. Just want to see if it's going to work. We'll move it into something else. See? That's a lot cleaner. 
and I got that from just the Stack Overflow. Now, had I had I continued to prompt Chat Gipit, it probably would have arrived at this at some point, but its its thing was way more tedious, right? It's like do build all this up, have to declare in us regular expressions, not keeping in not keeping in mind that. You know, as of as of January 2022, you're telling me this wasn't compatible. When was this written? 2018. So, so Swift, the versions of Swift have been up to speed enough that all of this works, right? Obviously, this regex stuff is built in, bolted into the string club. So, yeah, get points for that, dude. It's awesome. Um, yeah, look at that. Example if stir matches. Yeah, I agree. On a webard. Yeah, cool dude. People are ragging on Stack Overflow saying it's dead. I don't think it's dead. I think one of the problems you're going to see is there's going to be a realization that using chat Gipit is going to be, okay, it gives me answers, but I have no idea where they come from. Like, there's no sourceability here. And I can see a discussion here. I can see one solution being proposed and someone else saying, well, that doesn't work because of this and back and forth. This is important. This is useful. I don't know what kind of a hit stack overflow is taking, but I don't, I don't see AI wiping it out anytime soon. Not the large language models. They're not gonna be able to say, to show you the discourse. That's what's missing, right? It's, it's bypassing all of that and basically saying, statistically predicting that this is what the likely answer is, but you have no idea why or how reliable it is. There's gonna be a real, uh, buyer's remorse. We're in. A, we're currently in a uh, AI is going to replace everything bubble right now. It's going to replace some things, or it's going to make some things easier for sure. But yeah, there's a lot of fantasy going on. Anyway, or that's my uh, that's my sour grapes. I'm the old crow saying the grapes are sour. And I want to believe that the future, my future, will be destroyed by AI. Actually, you know what? <laughs> don't be a bad thing for me. Uh, and I don't need this anymore. Thank you very much. Okay, data expected to be argument type string. All right, so we're actually getting the data back. Um, yeah, strings is data. So this is that data becomes a string thingamabob. So data, strings, this is data. Uh, this is a data array. It's called strings data. Data strings. Strings data. String datas. Strings datas. Strings datas. Well, it's file contents. I'm assuming that they're strings. Contents datas. It's called contents datas. So our strings, we have to convert. So contents datas dot. So our data class, how do I convert? Well, let's ask the wizard again. How do I convert a Swift data class to a string? Oh, all right. 
contents is going to come down as data. So I need to do that. I need to do it in here where I map it. Contents. Dot. How about if we do this? String data. Like that. And we're still back down to strings. String strings. So this works. Try that. Take that. Yeah, has to be unwrapped, I understand. We're doing that, right? I think we're missing a, there we go. Try that. Oh, I do have to give it the encoding. TFA. All right, data might be, I have to do an if let, don't I? Yeah, I have to do an if let. Ugh. Yeah. Syntax. Syntax struggle because data may come back as nothing, so I have to say if let. Yeah, yeah, sucks. Mm. Let's bring this back here. If let data. Because if it's if there's no data, I just have to be a, do a null string. So we got this, we got this. And this capture exception within needs to happen here. I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get an exception here. I hope not. Um Yeah, see how I have to enter an entire block inside here? And if the syntax was done a certain way, I could I could do it in functional style, which is what I'd prefer. I know I sound very religious, don't I? Uh, else, yuck. And I have to say return, probably, right? Do I have to say return? That's interesting, I have to say return on filter. This is yuck. String data data.
Yuck. Look at how big and bulky this became. Just to basically say, if this thing is not null, I want to, I mean, if this thing comes back as nil, if I don't have any data, I just want a blank. And I got to put all this art, I got to put all this artifice in, in here to do this. Yuck. I can at least collapse this a bit. I know this is going against the grain of programmers who are all into the whole, you know, separate line. But you know what? That's not me. Maybe we can indent that a bit. I would like this to be compressed even more than this. And notice how I don't I don't match the, the braces lining up. I do Lisp style typically on a lot of these sorts of things. I don't do it your way, I do it my way. What I can't stand is when I see code, oh my God, I can't believe this. I don't know, this is a new thing. I see code like this all the time. What is with this? What is with this? I Explain to me why this is more readable. It's not, it just takes up more space. You see less on the screen. I actually find it harder to see where the boundaries are with these excessive horizontal blank lines. Can't stand it. You already get boundaries here. Like adding a blank line after this makes no sense. That makes no sense at all. And I see that a lot in code and I see a lot in YouTube videos. Like you've already got effectively a blank line here providing a separation at the beginning of this. It's crazy. It's just not my taste, not what I like. Okay, wow. Didn't get the syntax right and it just, look at that cascade from the parser. It's like, I completely lost track of everything going on. Um, yeah, I'm missing uh, one little guy. One little guy is enough. Don't have to make the whole thing bar. Okay. Inferred to have type, which may be unexpected. Dur contents. Do I have to say return? Okay, I'm filtering and then I'm mapping. So these transformations should yield a collection of the same type that came in. So dir contents is an array of strings. I filter that array of strings. I get a new string. String literal is unused. Okay, something, something's going on here. Do I have to say return? Maybe I have to say return. Look at how bulky that is. Oh, is this is this nillable? Wow. I guess it is. I think I have to do that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> See what we get. I'm gonna put some breakpoints in. Now I understand that by opening this up, we're able to put breakpoints in, but you know what? For the for the duration of time that you're gonna put a breakpoint, fine, just do it and then collapse it down. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like you can't edit source while you're debugging it and then not have to keep those edits. So well, let's see what we get. Actually, let's, uh, since we changed lines, let's, let's restart this. What files of strings? Boom. Boom. So our filter probably didn't work. That's what I'm guessing. Mm. 
Again, just for debugging purposes, I'll condense this down. Let matched equal string matches. If matched. Can I do this? I don't think I can. I think I have to have the the squirrely braces, right? Yeah, it's the I forget. I always forget in Swift. Kotlin is the opposite. You can actually do if if you can do if statements without if expressions without using squirrely braces for the uh, clauses. But the predicate has to be wrapped in in parentheses. In Swift, it's the opposite. You have to use squirrely braces for the clauses. But the predicate can be without, without, uh, without wrapping parentheses. It's almost as if the designers of the language is intentionally trying to make it opposite of each other. I'm doing this just so I can set a breakpoint here. Actually, let's do this. This will make it a little bit easier. And I just have to say false just so I can. I know this is kind of stupid. Just so I can set breakpoints. All right. This is this is what I want. Let's do this. Just so I can set breakpoints. I I can see what's going on here. Oh, I have to say return. You know, I wonder if it's because I didn't say return on that. Huh. Look at how wordy this is. It's very wordy. I don't like it being so wordy. False. 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 Okay, file name is... All right, reh dict script da 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 line set created file spec is reh dict script four eighteen line created with the star. Uh, yeah, that's not a regular expression. That's a that's a file system wildcard. I need to change that. Um, the regular expression that I want is going to be digits, actually. I want to make it precise. Yep. We don't need file service. We can get rid of that. Don't need this. We're keeping that open. Where did we put this? There it is. All right. So I could say star dot, and uh, for the regular expression, I have to put a slash for that. Actually, I think I have to double slash this so it appears as a slash. And if I wanted to, I could actually put in 0 9, and we make it a plus. So I'm saying, you got to give me some numbers, man. The rest of this stuff should all be fine. Let's try that. One or more digits. Does it say it's ignoring? File name looks like that. No, well, that's obviously wrong. That's our regex. No, there's two slashes in there. I would have thinked, I would have thinked, <laughs> I would have thought that Swift would have parsed that out as I really want a backslash. Oh. I 
I mean, I know there, I know there's one in there because directory contents contains. Now well, let's just keep going. It's probably never going to hit true. No. So try again. Let's get rid of one of those slashes. Pretty sure I'm going to need that slash because this dot will be interpreted as as any as any character in terms of regex. Yeah, see, he didn't like that. Unknown escape sequence. But, hmm. Yeah, see what happened? Huh. Well, let's see if it catches anything. Still not matching. Why doesn't it match? Let's just simplify this a bit. Dot star. I'm basically saying anything, anything at the end of that. This regex is not working too well. It's probably my fault. Yeah, it's not working. Hmm. Why didn't it reload? Start again. Four one eight nine one two line set created dot star. And dark contents. Come on, you showed it to us before. Come on, debugger. Cannot find in scope. Debugger is not very good. Now it's in scope. Line set created, line set created. Okay, four one eight nine one zero. Dashes line set created. And when I go here, 418912. Did I see a 912 in there? I think I didn't. Look at how, look at how the, uh, look at how the debugger loses context. Can I now see this? because it was inside, so it was inside this closure, it was inside this lambda, within this call, which should still be below the stack of where this is, but it lost context for that. Hmm. I don't see 418912 anywhere. Is it possible that this one doesn't have line sets or they didn't get created when it got pulled down? That seems possible. 
Maybe I should just wipe the user data because that's why it's not matching. I don't see the actual align set in there. Let's try a different, let's actually try a different, um, let's try a different script, one that I know is going to have line sets on it. Let's try this one. All right, so it's the same directory contents because it's the same files. But what's the actual file spec? 1159649. There we go. Should find at least one. 115, 115-9649. 115-9649. So it should hit one of these. It did. Okay, so that matches. All right, so we just literally didn't have any line sets stored. So our string matching thing worked. Cool. All right, cool. Um, I want to go back to seeing if specking it the other way. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess this is fine. It's like, I don't care. Well, let's just try this and see what happens. And I'm gonna put the double slash back in there. Let's see if it works. I think being specific on the regex is not a bad idea. Yeah, matches. Look at that. That's the file spec. Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Good. Good. That's what I want. All right. Moving on. Now it's actually going to try to read the content. Woohoo! Let's see what happens. Boom, we're going to return a string. We got some data. Uh, let's see what we got. All right. It's never hitting this, so that's good. I don't know if it's hitting that. We're going to find out when we see the final result. What do strings look like? Two values. Oh, look at that. That looks like the content of the file. Those look like line sets. Okay. It's kind of what I wanted. Loaded files as strings. Nice. Great. Excellent. I don't need this anymore. But let's uh, see if I, what's weird is I didn't, I did not need to put a return on this originally. I didn't need a return statement. It didn't give me a compiler error. It should expect a Boolean Lambda, a Lambda returning a Boolean. So if this doesn't return anything, if this is effectively no, then I should see that. These returns seem to be necessary. Yeah, let's try this again. Let's see if it, I can do that without the return statement. Yeah. So do I need these return statements because it's inside of an if an if? If is an expression or a statement? Uh, can if be used inside a Swift expression? I always forget because in Kotlin you can do, you don't need the ternary. There's this whole argument on the internet about, about uh, ternaries. 
for the reason ternaries are necessary. Yeah. Thanks to the ternary. No, if itself. Yeah, of course. So I think, yeah, I think these are statements. Um, and because these are indiv individual statements, the result of a statement is nothing. So I have to put the, I have to embed the returns in here. I'm pretty sure I can't say return if. Pretty sure I can't do this. But I'm pretty sure I can do it in Kotlin. No. Yeah, consecutive statements on a line. Da, 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 da. Anyway, yeah, I can't do that. Statement based programming. Not a fan. Everything should be an expression. Why not? Why can't everything be an expression? Okay. We're going to leave this like this. Let contents data. Could get rid of the dir contents intermediate variable. We could get rid of strings. For debugging purposes, this helps us. Uh, I have to catch an exception somewhere in here. I'm not really doing that, am I? Is this an exception? Or does it just give us a null? Not entirely sure. Uh, we need to deal with this. Oh, the, the do statement. This is the exception handling stuff, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm seeing here. Because this is a try. This is its own try. Yeah, see how this exception handling and statement blocking makes for so much more uh, of an apparatus of code. I would like this to just flow through. Give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. If it fails anyway along the way, bail out and log an error. But you have to kind of stair step your way through this. Do and try, and if it fails the try here, but there's a try inside of here that maybe could fail, and then I'm gonna return here if I don't return, yeah. yeah, yeah. Statement-based procedural programming, not a fan of it, obviously. All right, more importantly, log the error. I've got error logging elsewhere. I don't seem to have anything in this file. Log. 18 matches. Word log is pretty generic. No, this has to do with being logged in or not. Pretty sure I have some logging stuff in the UI code. Log. <laughs> Again, logged in, logged out. And this is doing a case insensitive search. Come on, I got logging somewhere in here. I don't like to memorize how I do all this. Yeah, to a fine grep. Let's see what we got for log. Oh, there's a lot. Under main. Do, 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 do. All has to do with login. It's really NS log, right? It's all in legacy. I don't do any logging in my new code. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. I guess I just write code that doesn't need to be logged. Wow, how amazing am I? Huh. Or I just haven't been responsible and gotten around to doing it yet. Yeah, it's all in legacy. All right, well, let's grab a legacy Swift code. It's all in legacy object C. There's got to be some logging in the Swift code. Come on, let's get serious. Must be called something else. It's not going to be log lowercase. Oh, maybe it is. Look at that. Oh. There's a logger. 
That's what I'm looking for. So legacy Swift code has a logger class under found. <laughs> there it is. Login user log. And it does nothing. This looks like dead code, doesn't it? This wants to crash analytics stuff. It's been disabled because it's been broken for a while. Okay. Oh, well, that answers that question. All right, so what do we got under, what do we got under, uh, that's all that's there under Swift. Logger log. Logger log, user registered, does nothing. <laughs> Goes nowhere. You are going nowhere. I'm getting punchy. Boop, 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 boop. Let's steal something here. We'll just grab that. None of this stuff logs where it is, though. Some of it does. You can see there, script for upload, script manager, color picker, uh, view controller. So sometimes it names itself. I, I like having a pattern of logging, you know, the namespace, the function, whatever it is, for debugging purposes, obviously. I think this is fine. I think we'll just copy that. Copy that. We're not printing an error here. We're doing NS log. Next step log. So we're an iOS platform function. Let's go ahead and put that in there. iOS app platform dot load files as strings. And we're going to put the file spec in there. Now this is going to fail if any one of those file reads fails. But we're okay there. I like to say right at the top, failed. Failed to load. Load. Help to load a file. Uh, hmm. It didn't fail to load a file. Failed loading files. Let's just say failed. We don't know exactly why. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not getting granular enough to specify exactly what's going wrong here. I mean, this this could fail, so the content path itself is not happening. Unlikely. Each individual file read could fail, and we're not really specifying that. Well, we should. We should just wrap it. Let's 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 be responsible here. I mean, we are logging. I'm going to generalize this in a better way at some point, but for now, let's. We don't want to interrupt <coughs> the collection on individual failures. So, see, this is what sucks. I want to catch this exception of just the content read by itself. But then if I do that, if I do this, Now, dir contents, because of the way the let syntax works, is scoped within this do, and I can't use it here. So what would have to happen is I'd have to make a mutable variable, var dir contents, with its actual type, outside, 
If that fails, it's null. And it, I mean, it's suck. This is why exception handling flow is sucks. Just this, this local scoping in here is problematic. This lexical scoping that we've got going on. And then we got the duplicate returns that are almost identical, except in one case it's empty, which we could just generate an empty and return that. I mean, we can do that, right? But again, I can't do that because of the way let bindings work. So this is a nice binding. This declares an immutable, an immutable binding of this name. Type is inferred. I don't have to specify the type. But if I wanted to commonalize this code out here and say string equals, because of the damn lexical scoping of the do catch block, Maybe there's a way to do it. Maybe if I was more of a Swift expert, but it just doesn't seem obvious to me. This is what I'd like to do. But in order to do that, I have to put strings out here and make it a var. Because I, I literally have a reference, and I'd probably have to do something like this. But I'd have to give it a type and, ah. Ugly, ugly. Yeah. That's not cool. It's not cool. So I'm going to catch the exception in here. I'm going to log the error, right? Um, yeah, what a mess. What a mess. Do. Look at how look at how look at how stacked this becomes. Uh, so I gotta do the do catch. Yeah, this is this is really gross exception error handling pyramid of doom kind of crap. If I spent hours, I could figure out some way to clean this up a bit, but I don't really want to invest too much time into coding all this Swift stuff. I'll bring this back to here so we can see where it lines up. All right. Do. So this potentially, I'm assuming this potentially throws an exception, right? Doesn't it? Can we look at that? Or if this fails, no, this is, yeah, this is going to, because right, this is the call contents. Um, they call this the Elvis operator in Kotlin, but it's uh, it's two question marks instead of the other, looking like the Elvis hair. It's basically saying if the path fails, getting the path fails, or it's a nil, we're going to use blank. But if this fails, it's going to be nil. And if it's nil, we're going to end up here. So will this actually ever throw an exception? Seems to me like I could log the error right here and not have to not have to do a, a catch. Let's make sure this is actually going to throw an exception. File manager. Let's go back to the can you can you jump straight to that? Yes. Okay. Again, the methods for compatibility. Oh, I'm supposed to say contents at URL, right? Methods on SDH return NS error should be regarded as the primary method. Why? Because this just doesn't give you an error. There's no error information. That's the problem, right? Nullable. If it comes back nullable, I just don't know why. So this doesn't throw any kind of exception, I guess. Would be nice if it actually told me that. Um, so we were supposed to find contents. Uh, let's just let's just look at the Apple documentation. <laughs> Where are my Apple documentation? Uh, fine. iOS documentation. Swift documentation. File manager contents. Uh, to 
do, 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 do. We want contents. Contents of directory at URL. Contents of directory at path. Shell search specified returns path of any contained items. That's contents of a directory. I want contents. Contents. Could you have had a more generic name? Look at how big this guy is. This is what you call a big object. Contents of directory. Oh no, numerators. Uh. No, 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 no. Okay, looks like chat Gipit is going to be up. Flow review, contents. Contents of directory, contents, contents. There we go, contents at path, contents equal at path. This guy, turns data, that's the one we want. Some of their error occurs returns now. Isn't this not the one we're supposed to use? This is the one we're using. Are we not supposed to use it? Wow. These methods are for compatibility. The corresponding methods on NS data and return S should be regarded as the primary method. Oh, the corresponding methods on NS data. Yeah, this is that inversion. You don't call the file manager and ask it to give you data. You go to the data and tell it to access the file manager. Oh, you know what? I'm not doing that. Not right now, anyway. Oh, so painful. Um, yeah, not doing that. Let's just go and stick with what we have. But the point is I don't need to catch an exception, so let's undo all this. Because exception is not going to get thrown there. It's going to get thrown on contents of directory, apparently. There's a try. So here I still want to log an error. No log an error. Because I went out to read a file. I mean, I know the file name. I went out to read the file and it, and it failed. Well, then. So, so file spec file name failed to read file. Yeah, try that. Does this contents of directory even throw an exception? Contents at path. Contents at of directory at path. So I don't think this throws an exception. Why is there a try in there? Was I just copying what Chat Gibbet told me to do? The guy dead, right? Unquestioningly. 
uncritically. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, see, I did this. I don't think I need to do that. It'll return an error if there's an error, which I like. error. Yeah, let's code it that way. So much better. Let's get rid of this. Bingo. Maybe it isn't as terrible as I thought. At path. Yeah. Error. FM error. Can we do this? I would be interested to see if I can do that. See if we can get rid of this catch shit. Let's just try to compile this and see what happens. Ah, it throws. Does it? Or throwing function of type throws. Invalid conversion from throwing function of type throws to non-throwing function. Is it because I have try in here? Let's try without the try. Okay. Contents of directory at path. Error. Error. argument error extra argument in call huh contents of directory Deprecated. That's deprecated. Contents are directly at URL. Doesn't it like why doesn't it like me passing that? Why doesn't it like this? At path error. It doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like it?
It's an NS error. It's not a string. Pointer to a pointer. Can I even do that in Swift? Let's ask the wizard. Maybe that's why it's maybe that's why it's wrapped. Because Swift wraps that with their strings. This is old. Where's what I just did? Did I delete it? Huh. I think the try, I'm guessing that the try, uh, All right, chat Gippa, here's your chance to shine. How do I pass the error object from Swift when calling? Try catch. Doesn't seem to be allowing this. This is what I'm trying to do. FM error, NS error, question mark. Right, it gives me a pointer. That makes sense. Um, but it doesn't seem to like passing error in. extra argument error. That, did I do something wrong? App path, path error. I have to say ampersand error. But I don't think it likes the argument. I think it pisses it off. No, same problem. Wrong. When compiling in Xcode, trying to pass the argument error produces this compile error. Doesn't, doesn't directly accept the SS, it throws an error conforming to the error protocol. Yeah. So what it originally told me is that I had to use, well, and then it repeated itself. It repeated itself on the thing that didn't work. Look at that. So notice how it says, if you absolutely need to call Objective-C with the error parameter, you can use the following. Right? And then I go, no. And it says, oh, yeah. It doesn't directly accept the yes error point as a parameter. Instead, it throws an error conforming to the error protocol. Here's how you can handle it in Swift, right? What it told me to do originally, which is wrapping it in this lame ass way to do it. Da 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 da. If you specifically need to use the Objective C method with error parameter, you might need to use the Objective C style and bridge it to Swift. Here's an example. Where's the bridging? This is Swift code. This looks identical to this. It doesn't know what it's saying. Your second example of 
bridging to objective C is exactly the same example that you provided before, that does not compile. You're correct, and I appreciate your patience. All right, so we're back to what we had. We're stuck with their due. All right. Failed to get contents of directory. That's the only thing that's going to cause this to fail. And notice how the failure at the bottom matches the attempt at the top. Kind of hard to follow. All right. String literals are not preceded by a thing of a bob. In Swift. I see that. Thank you. Uh, let's just make sure this works. Um, and we got our strings. All right, no errors. Well, that works. Yay. Okay. And we're actually calling it. Here we're getting our line sets. Let's continue on. Our line sets to draw our mutable line sets. Ooh. Oh, this is where it's saying I'm ignoring the return value. That's true. Um, all right, so the next thing to do here is to well, Remember, I'm going to get a set of strings from this. So I should be able to just iterate over that set of strings and convert them to an MS dictionary, which I will do next time. But that's enough for tonight. No, convert a list of strings, array, I guess, uh, strings to MS dictionary dictionaries. Uh, yep. That's good. That's enough for tonight. And uh, let's uh, save it. Did we save the other thing already? It's a long one. Uh, to get status. All right, so that's been pushed. Yeah. Four fingers. Get status. Yeah. Dot. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, get log. Uh, commit. With nine. Uh, successfully loading. Stored JSON files. Ah, but more yet to do. Uh -huh. Get bridge get lab. Cool. Bing. We implemented that thing and it worked. Okie dokie. If you're watching, thanks for watching. And 
in all your struggles. I wish you the best of luck.